Welcome, guys, to the Full Armor of Game podcast episode number 50. We made it all the way to 50. We have over 10,000 subscribers in, I believe, less than a year now starting the podcast. Today's topic is women you stay away from when it comes to relationships. We bring the crowns and heads of conquered kings to my city steps. You insult my queen. You threaten my people with slavery and death. So these are the types of women you do not want to get in a relationship with, fellas, and we're going to break it down for you and the reasons as to why. But before we start, we have our five-week seminar beginning August 21st. It is first come, first serve. We only have about 10 spots, 10 seats available because we can only spend so much time with you guys individually after we go over the weekly seminars with you. You basically have a coaching session for as long as it takes with me and Adam, the texting prince. So could you imagine if we had over 10 people? We'd be doing this all night. So it's first come, first serve, and you guys get all of our courses included for free when you sign up. You guys can also do monthly payments, but that is over a thousand dollar value of everything you need in order to succeed with women. We have my attraction ebook, which teaches you inner game. We have my relationship ebook, which teaches you how to pass a woman's test and how to keep a girl. We also have my workout program to get you guys those broad shoulders that women drool over like Pavlov's dog. We also have Adam's texting program and his dating app profile game. So you guys have everything you need. He teaches you how to master the dating app world and how to master the texting game world. So when you combine every single course and what we teach you, there's no way you can lose with women. So sign up now and you also get three months free in the Players University after you guys do the seminar. You guys will get access and you guys are going to keep learning more game. So it's up to them, Adam. If they want to join, we're going to get them right for the fall, for the end of the summer, for also the winter all year round. And we know the girls come out once when the summer is done, the girls come out on the dating apps. They're looking to settle down. They're really looking to match with specific guys. That's when they're really looking to have fun with a guy because summertime is a lot harder. Because the girls are always busy, they're on vacation, they're doing things, but now they get to settle down a little bit. And you guys have an edge over all the other guys out there. Yeah, and real quick for you guys, if you've uh, applied to join the five-week seminar, again, you can do that in the show notes below uh, this podcast. You um, get your application in, and then I will be sending out another round of emails here in the next day or two. So if you got your application in, haven't heard from us, don't worry. You'll be getting emails. And then from there, once the emails go out, it is just first come, first serve. When you claim your spot, once it's filled up, we're going to be done. And then we'll have the rest of you guys, if you want to join us in a future seminar when we put that on, uh, you will still be the first to hear about that. So get that application in and we'll try to squeeze you in on this one. And if not, you'll be one of the first to hear about the next seminar when we announce it in the future. Yeah, so... Make sure you guys sign up. I'm excited. I know Adam's excited as well. We have a lot of special treats for you guys. We hold your hand from beginning to end when it comes to attraction, comfort, seduction, and also how to keep a girl if you guys want a relationship with her. And we teach you things we do not talk any about anywhere else. So I would definitely join. But let's get started with the podcast Women you want to stay away from when it comes to relationships. So these are women. You can have recreational fun with them. Don't get too close. But also, don't try wifing them up. These are women you do not want to get into serious relationships with or commitments with. And I hope women aren't listening to this podcast because we might offend some women out there. <laughs> but this is for you men only. And this is for educational purposes only. 
and entertainment purposes only too. So my first one off the list, and first I want to talk about why it's important to screen a woman and why you have to avoid these types of women we are telling you guys about. Because we've been in toxic relationships. We've been in some of the worst relationships with some nasty women out there. And nasty by that, I mean personality-wise, attitude. Because your life, the happiness that you are going to feel for the rest of your life is correlated with the types of people you allow to be inside of your life, including women. So the... How can I put this? I want to rephrase this so guys can understand. The quality of your life, fellas, is directly correlated with the types of women that you allow to be a part of your life. And I've seen many men blown out of the water, stressed out of their mind. They have no peace. They're trapped. They feel like slaves. They don't feel like masculine alpha men when they are in relationships with these women. And a great example... There's been video spiraling with this one famous actor, Ben Affleck. If you look at the facial expression that this guy has every time he's on camera now, because we all know he started dating Jennifer Lopez. If you guys can picture the most miserable man in the world because he chose to be with this woman, it's Ben Affleck. And you can just see the energy the life being sucked out of him where he is an empty shell of his former self. And that is all because of the woman he allowed to be in his life. He has no one to blame but himself. And I've seen many men in that position. Yeah, you're talking about like the famous car door, like him shutting the car door and just looking like he needs to smoke like six packs of cigarettes to stay sane. Every yeah, that, video, every video of him. That's the type of stuff too that like I see on a micro scale of buddies of mine that like once they get in a long-term relationship or get married especially and all of a sudden I don't see them for a year, year and a half, two years and they just look like a, a, a shell of the man that they once were. They just look, their their energy looks drained in their face. They just look more like pale. They look more lifeless and that can happen with the company you keep if you're not careful about the women that you're allowing into your life. And what does it say in the Bible, Adam? And we might do a Bible game real soon. Everyone's been asking for it. It is better to be in the wilderness. It's better to be homeless than being with a quarrelsome woman. So it's basically better to be in the wilderness by yourself, fellas, living in the wild than living with a toxic argumentative woman oh i got and this bro, that is written it. in the bible that's written in the bible hey, so the, guys... the whole uh man versus bear or man versus bear women were asking about it's like no men we would choose to live in a wilderness with a bear over a quarrelsome woman that true. is a truth <laughs> that, right that's there. the truth and you see it in ben affleck's facial expressions and i've had cousins family members friends and i see that same facial expression and it's it's heartbreaking because no matter how much advice you try giving them, there's certain people you can't save. But we're here to save you guys. So the first one off my list instantly. Is she an attention whore? We all know what an attention whore is. That could be based off her social media. The types of pictures she takes. That could also be the type of woman that she is when she's out in public at the gym, wherever she is, she has gym buddies coming up to her. She constantly needs that attention and validation from all these various men. She'll go to the gym purposely, not even to work out, but to see how much attention can she get from men that are feeding her ego. They, they just need that validation and they're a constant attention whore. The problem with these women, when you get in a relationship with them, there is nothing you can do that's going to satisfy her hunger. No matter how much attention you give her, how much validation, she's always going to need more. And she's going to get it externally from other men. Even if that means using her social media, posting provocative pictures. So if you're with a woman and she's still posting provocative pictures, she is still seeking attention from other men. 
She has that for sale sign up. I don't care what anyone says. A woman can post whatever she wants. I don't give a fuck. But if she's with me and she is still posting provocative pictures, I'm not going to be with her anymore because I know what that means. And that's the type of girl you guys never want to be with. You want to be with a girl who knows how to post classy pictures. She's still beautiful. She's still sexy, but there's nothing provocative about her pictures. And she's not posting selfies every five minutes. Those are the women you also want to avoid. The selfie girl. Every picture is, a, is of her, a selfie in a car. Wherever she is, it's just a selfie, selfie, selfie. Those are the most insecure women you'll ever meet in your life. And they will never be happy with you. Those are yeah. my, that's my number one thus far, Adam. Yeah, and a good point with that too is that if a woman has been getting attention and validation from her social media, and or like Zara said, at the gym and all that stuff. So now there's two options. So maybe she happens to be a loyal girl, but she still has this entire void of all of that attention and validation that she's used to receiving. It's just like if you were taking drugs, you can't just turn, you know, it's like quit cold turkey, you'll get some withdrawals or whatever. It's like when these women are used to posting these um, for attention and validation, if she happens to be a loyal girl, well, guess what? Now she's going to expect you to take over those 50, 60, 70 other guys that were validating her. And that'll have to be all on you, which will make you turn into a beta simp in her eyes anyway. So the two options are she's loyal and now it's all on you and you become a beta fied simp by having to fulfill all of her validation 24 seven or she continues to get that attention and validation from other men, from social media, from guys at the gym. And now you have to worry about your reputation going down the drain because every guy knows that if your woman's out there on the streets, it looks bad on you as a man that you can't keep her you know, in line, can't keep her satisfied with you. She's got to get it from other places. So either way you chop it up, bad, bad place to be. A girl that I will say on here that I would have no desire to be in a committed relationship is the women that share their diary on social media. And <laughs> I see this a lot from like girls I graduated from high school with, like all the, if I'm friends with any of them still on Facebook, I would see this type of drama where they will post like a relationship meme and it'll be like, ever dated a narcissist and then all of a sudden she'll post that and then she'll leave a whole caption about how oh my ex was this completely and then they give this whole sob story this whole victim mentality but they literally reveal their diary online i want zero part of that talk about not having peace in your life and just having constant drama and gossip is you're going to have to worry about what this girl is always posting on her social media. Is she bringing all this drama to the relationship and you don't even know about it? She's just airing out dirty laundry. And then you got to worry about when something happens, you guys break up or anything, a fight happens in your relationship. Guess what? She's been playing this social media diary game. She is going to now paint you as the villain to everybody in your life. You could have all sorts of mutual friends. Your mom could be following on fa her Facebook. And all of a sudden, now you're getting everything private aired out into the open on social media where you're going to be the villain no matter what to her friends, her family, because they're going to see her side that she posts. So if a girl is a diary sharer on social media, I probably don't even want a one night stand or short term with her because... I'm going to get a meme, you know, she's going to write a meme about me like Taylor Swift writing a bad love song. But in general, most for sure, I would not commit to something like that for anything long term or any relationship. And you can really spot these types of women. It's hard to do it on Instagram. But if you go on their Facebook, Facebook, especially, yeah. I want you guys to understand something. Follow a girl on her Facebook. If you're dating her or you just met her, look at what she posts. And a lot of people say, oh, it's just social media. It's not real. That's that's not who they truly are. No, that's truly who they are. And I see this from women all the time. They start gossiping about a specific guy. 
They start disrespecting him in a sneaky way. They start airing out their dirty laundry. They start treating him like the abuser. They start saying many disrespectful things defaming him. They try to sound slick. They're going to do the exact same thing to you. And you don't ever want to be with a woman who can't keep her mouth shut, who has to gossip to the entire world. You're not special. You're go She's going to do the exact same thing to you. So I advise stalk a girl on her Facebook if you are thinking of getting serious with her because you have to do your homework. And girls do the same thing with you guys as well. They do it with me. They do it with Adam. They stalk us on our social media. They want to know what we're talking about. They want to know what videos we're making. It's okay for you to stalk a girl to see what she's about. Because your reputation is the most important thing. And I can't stand when I see a woman talking shit about another guy or airing out their dirty laundry about an ex or a relationship when no one gives a shit. No one gives a shit about you or your relationship. But another thing it does, it invites vultures. When other men see that she's going through some type of domestic strife, oh, that's when they start swooping in. They start messaging her. Yeah. Hey, are you okay? Yeah. I noticed the message. They got the easy in for the easy in to, to get back in on her radar, get back in her life. Yes. Because I already know when I see that, I'm like, oh, come to daddy. I already yeah. know when I see she's having issues with the man, I'm that guy that messages her. Uh, there's some guys that I've never met in person, but I feel like I have an obviously jaded, you know, misguided representation of who they are. But I've like I feel like I know this guy just because I've heard so many stories about the girl he's dating, posting all these things on him. I'm like, that sucks when you, you get a reputation built completely on her, um, her mind and on her social media. And then now all of a sudden, all these other people are getting ideas about who you are as a man from her mouth. And if a woman doesn't move in a smooth way, so say if you meet a girl and you find out, she gossips about you before you guys even going out on a date together. You know, this girl just can't stop talking about it. She's always saying things about it to her friends, to her peers. That girl has a big fucking mouth. I would advise, do not stick your dick inside of crazy. Because she's the type of girl that's going to go around and tell everyone your business. The size of your penis. Oh, he was this. Oh, he was that. You could tell, ah, uh, big mouth. I can't be with her. And that's one of my biggest turnoffs. I have to know if a girl can be discreet. Is she a chatterbox? Yeah. So and that's be, that's a good before one. Before you, you go mentioned. to your next ones are one point that you mentioned about the stalking a girl thing, which is very much like if I meet a new girl and all of a sudden it's like she sends me a friend request on Facebook, I'm definitely doing that, you know, swipe through to just kind of get a, a read on her. But we, Zar and I are not giving you simps out there permission to watch the stories of the girls you're enamored by just so you can see her again and fall in love. And you're like, but I'm doing research. I'm, I'm, I'm checking out her stories just in case she says anything that's a red flag. It's like, no, no, no. We know that game. Don't try that. This is like a, you're just doing your recon, getting a good initial impression of her, but you're not sitting there living on all of her stories and constantly scouring her social media, trying to like all of her posts and all that. That is simp behavior. We're talking about detective behavior for your own sanity, not for you to get your rocks off in your fantasy with this girl that sees you as a simp. Yeah, so just quickly go through what type of statuses she's posting. And you can get a good feel of what type of a girl she is. Okay? But like Adam said, it doesn't give you permission to be a simp and to look at all her stories. No, don't even look at her stories. But look at what she's writing. Okay? So my next one is... The girl that has a lot of plastic surgery, oh. whether it's her face, Botox, fake boobs, BBLs, she gets lip fillers, any type of plastic surgery or enhancement, facial enhancements, boob enhancements. These girls, this is the issue with these girls. Not only are they very insecure, they never learn to love themselves. They're not confident people. So what happens is these girls were so busy trying to work on their physical appearance. They never worked on their outer. Not well, let me let me rephrase that. They're so busy working on their physical appearance, their outer beauty. 
they never bothered to work on their inner beauty, their confidence, how likable they are, their character, their personality. They never worked on those characteristics about themselves. So they rely heavily on their looks. And most of these women are empty. They're shallow. And what happens with a lot of these women is they become single mothers. They become cougars who become ran through. The women that get plastic surgery. You want a woman, and we've mentioned this on another podcast, Adam. You want a woman who doesn't put on a lot of makeup, who's confident in herself, who works out, who's healthy. Those are the women you want to be with. The women that are the most confident. There's a reason why you want to be with these women. They're less likely to cheat on you. They have that inner confidence, the way they walk. They don't put on a lot of makeup. They're happy and content with who they are as a woman. That means they've built their character. They have a good personality. They have good energy. They have good outlook on life. They're very likable. So those are the women that you want to be with, fellas. But if she's the one that gets her lips done looking like she blew a beehive, she gets all this Botox done, even fake boobs. I don't care what women say, the BBLs, the fake butts, the fake boobs. There's a reason why women do that. They're looking for sexual validation and sexual attention from men. If they weren't looking for that, they wouldn't get all these plastic surgeries. Yeah, and plastic surgery is like the never-ending project. Like if you watch, if you listen to any interviews where they're like, hey, how many surgeries have you gotten done? It's like once a woman starts to get the lip injections, the Botox and the it's like a never ending cycle that she continues on for a long period of time because now she's just looking at, oh, well, oh, I don't like that little spot in my cheek. Let's get that done up. Or, oh, my nose needs to be even you know, smaller. I'm going to get another surgery on that. Oh, my Botox is running out. So I'm going to get more injections in there. And then the Botox just becomes this thing that just takes over to where they have these like completely plastic doll faces. And I am shocked every guy I talk to are like we we have the same discussions about like why do girls do this it's gross like she just looks fake and plastic she looks like every other girl and every girl i talk to is all about like i can't wait to get botox oh yeah i'm gonna get it here oh i i've already gotten you know however many rounds of botox it's like every girl for some reason thinks guys are attracted to it and every guy that i talk to is like not attracted to it it's such a weird disconnect but if you deal with the plastic surgery girl it's not a one time one and done thing. It's going it, to, it's a road of expenses. It's going to keep it happening. And then one day you're going to show, you know, you're going to be at home. She's coming over and all of a sudden she has like six more procedures done. And you don't even recognize her. <laughs> so you're going to be dating a monstrosity. One of those, uh, I don't know what those, there's like some really, uh, do you know what I'm talking about? The, the rich guy. I, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I'm talking about? That weird, the, the, it's like a totally cartoon face. Yeah. One of those guys where you can't stop and you just have to keep getting it done. I am and just, I, I would be embarrassed to show off a girl like that. And I made a status on Facebook regarding this topic about the girl that puts on a lot of makeup where before you even wake up, if you're laying with her, she's the first one up putting makeup on her face because she doesn't want you to see her without makeup. Those are some of the worst women to get in relationships with if you can't wake up next to her and see her natural, beautiful face. So they used to be called, I know there was a term for it, the, the Mr. Potato Head. Yeah. Okay, if you remember that. I know you guys are probably younger or if you're older, you know what I'm talking about. But I made this status on Facebook and one of the girls that follows me, this is what she said, fellas. This is how delusional women are, some women then don't hold women to unrealistic beauty standards. You know what I replied <laughs> they with? They always say that. <laughs> you know, but you know what I replied with? Men have nothing to do with this. It's women and social media who hold women to a specific beauty standard. It's not men. It's women. So cut the bullshit. Men don't care about the plastic surgery and these unrealistic expectations of how a woman's beauty should be. We like a woman who is natural, who works out, who doesn't put on a lot of makeup. We like simple women, and yet they still look good. 
We don't put any type of unrealistic expectations or beauty standards on a woman. That is all you women. So I just had to make a rebuttal on her comment. Yeah, no, I, that's a good point because that is what we'll always hear. It's like, well, if men didn't set, the patriarchy set all these unrealistic standards, I'm like, every guy I talk to thinks that looks terrible. I don't, <laughs> yeah, what about Cosmopolitan? I'll go, I'll go pull every guy in the yeah. bar and show you. None of, none of us think this is attractive. It's all you ladies buzzing each other up to get yep. your face more plastic. And us guys are just sitting on the sideline and like, what are you doing to your body? Why would you do that? You can blame the Kardashians, these cosmopolitan magazines, all these other unrealistic expectations that they have for women. And it's other women. It has nothing to do with what men did or the patriarchy. So, yeah, yeah avoid those women that put on a ton of makeup as well because they are very insecure and they're easy to sleep with. The women that have makeup caked on their face, very easy to pick up. The next woman I have on here is, I mean, I guess if you're a beta male lib liberal <laughs> these days, you won't have a problem with this. But me personally, I could not find peace if my if the girl I was seeing was one of the social justice warriors that needs to fight every new mainstream battle on her social media. I'm talking the girls that when the BLM thing was coming out, they changed their profile pic to BLM. Gay pride, they change it to the gay pride flag. Trans rights, they get the trans flag. George, or George Floyd, they were all up in roar about that. The Ukraine, they changed their profile picture to the Ukraine flag. This Israel-Palestine thing, they got something to say about that. Every few weeks, it's something new that she is shocked by and outraged by and gets her all in an emotional fit because she buys, she sucks on the teat of the mainstream media and that type of woman will not bring you peace. I have, um, I actually just hung out with a buddy uh, last weekend who I hadn't talked to in a bit. He recently got married and just had a child with um, his now wife and he goes, dude, does I love her and all, but he's like, I would have never married a libtard if I could redo this again. Because he's like, every time there's some issue, she freaks out and she's unhappy. And then he's like, she's all outraged by some new thing on social media. And then I have to sit here and calm her down because it's just a constant fire that he has to put out because she gets an uproar over the mainstream media. And then like, I'm going to share here for guys on video. Okay. So I just saw this on Twitter. So this guy says, told my wife I was considering voting for Trump because of crypto. She told me I should consider finding a new wife if I plan to vote that way. And then he says, going to be a fun few months in this great nation. It's like when you get an SJW girlfriend, the social media is going to dictate her happiness <laughs> and you're going to have to deal with that all the time. And then I agree with this starboard down here said, Imagine imagine having your wife say this to you and accepting it. That's some gay stuff, not gonna lie. <laughs> I, <laughs> I totally was gonna agree. tell you, I was gonna tell you, please read the comment, Adam. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, that. that is the reason I screenshot yep. that. So we have some sanity in our life. Don't get into a relationship with a liberal to begin with. So your friend or whoever that was, they knew what type of a woman she was before they ended up being with her. So she yeah. was a headache before he was even in a relationship. So that's his fault. That he, oh, I know, that and I laughed. I laughed and told him that. Guess what his response was? What? He goes, he goes, dude, I know, but this girl is giving me the best rim jobs of my life. Oh my! And that's <laughs> what happens, man. And he you don't eats think his she's booty done that. hole, and that that made him give her the ring, even though he has to deal with all this. <laughs> well, he he's yeah. gonna reap. He's gonna reap what he sows, and yeah, that's the definition of an energy vampire which you guys want to stay away from as well. So she's the woman, like we mentioned with Ben Affleck, she just sucks the life out of you. What she does is she never, she makes sure that you never reach your full potential. So if you're constantly trying to improve yourself, better yourself, level up, she's always pulling you back down to her level. You never want to be with a woman like that who doesn't support you, who doesn't help you reach your full potential. And those are the types of women that most men are stuck with in today's society, with the liberals, the headaches. Avoid those women. If she's constantly argumentative, 
if she's always combative, if she's never apologizing, if she always has to have the second say in every single topic or discussion, she always has to be the last person to give her opinion, to make you feel as if you're less than a man, avoid her. Yeah, and the I guess the clarification would be if we just said avoid all liberal women, it's like good luck in today's United States of finding a woman. But there's a difference between a woman kind of pretending to care about these issues and not really caring and her being on the front lines of social media trying to start some big movement about it. It's like most women are going to be liberal and they're going to go, oh, yeah, I care about this or I care about that. But they don't bring it up and they don't their mood doesn't get affected by all these new trends on mainstream media. So there's a difference there. It's like the girls that are changing their profile pic. They're really making a big deal about it. Those are women. I'm like, no, thank you. That was a really good one. I agree with that. I forgot about those types of women, to be honest with I you. I just see it. I'm in Washington State, so I see it all the time with women yeah. around me. I'm like, oh, God, that girl. I've seen her. She looked normal. And now I see her Facebook rants. I'm like, remind me to not flirt with her next time I see her. Yeah, it's prevalent in Washington State. It's not yeah. that bad in Jersey yet. Hopefully it stays that way. But my next one is we all know this type of girl or this type of person. Stay away from not just the women like this, but also the guys that are the the bad luck people. Oh, you know, bad things just happen to me. Oh, I'm just, oh, bad luck. I, no, nothing ever goes my way. There's always something negative associated with this person. They're a Debbie Downer. Nothing good ever happens in their life. And that's because most of the times they're not good people. It's not bad luck. It's not some bad juju. They haven't been cursed. They're just trashy people. And that's why bad things happen to them. Now, granted, in the Bible, it says the rain falls on the just and the unjust. So bad things happen to good people as well, just like bad things happen to bad people. But if everything bad is happening to this person, if you associate with that person, guess what's going to happen? Everything bad is going to start happening to you too. I've been there before in my toxic relationship. Everything bad that was happening to her carried on to me because I associated with that person. It's not because I had bad luck. I had bad judgment by being with her. And misery wants company. These are the people, you know these women. They're like, oh, I just can't catch a break. Oh, you know, this just happened to me. And I guess I'm just a bad luck person. Nothing good ever happens. If it'd be raining right now and I'd get hit with a piano or something over, you, you don't want to be around these miserable people. Misery wants company and your peace and your health of mind is the most important thing you have as a man. Yeah, that's a great one. Uh, and you, like you said, that's male or female. That's just people in general. And the other problem with that too is that it's really hard for those type of people to celebrate any wins you have. You have a good day. You got something. You got promoted and you're all excited. And instead of this person being excited for you and happy, they're needing to poke holes in something. They're needing to complain about something. They don't want to see you lifted up high when they're down in the dumps. Like Zar said, misery loves company. So they're going to try, try to talk you down from your high and tell you why it's not as good as you think. And they can't just be happy for you or be happy with you because everything there's constantly going to be a problem that they find and this could be with family members with acquaintances people you used to be friends with hopefully you're not friends with these people anymore because you don't want to be a loser for the rest of your life girls you're dating your girlfriend if you're in a situation like this right now with a girlfriend i want you to break up with her because i'm telling you your life is never going to get better you have to take that emotional needle out of your vein and realize you don't need this girl and watch how much your life flourishes right after. Because the second I cut out all these losers out of my life, and by losers, I mean people that were miserable and bad things would just always happen to these people. When I cut myself away from them, family members, friends, those that were close to me, girls, girlfriends, good things started happening. I still had my bad days, but it was much better than being around those people. Okay. When you surround yourself with good, positive people, you become a good, positive person because good things happen to your life. 
bad things happen to everybody in life at some point, but it's all about how you handle it and how you kind of reframe it in your mind. It's like, I know some people that some really bad things have happened to them or someone even brings something up about this or that, or like, Oh man, that sucks. Your car got broken into and they stole all that. And it's like, you, you hear that and you're like, dang, that person should be out down in the dumps. And they're just like, ah, oh, well, you know, I probably shouldn't have parked it there anyway. It's okay. Everything happens for a reason. I'll figure it out. It's like when someone responds like that, you're kind of like, man, I want to be around that person. Like that is just a refreshing, nice energy when they so easily could take the victim card and instead they take what you call like the high road. And that is an energy giver, not an energy drainer. They're not trying to steal all the negative energy and just it's all about me and how you should feel bad for me. They're like, no, no, it's okay. It's a growing opportunity. It's a learning moment. I'm like, man, that's awesome. I always love hearing when someone can bounce back from something like that. Yeah, no matter what happens in your life, you still have a say in how you react. And the best way to always react is positively instead of negatively. The last one I have written down here, having no motivation or drive. It's okay. I don't I don't want a boss babe girl that's trying to kill it in the corporate world or all that type of stuff. I'm not I don't mean that, but there's our women throughout the years I've hung out with that try to pull me away from goals I have. If I tell her I'm getting up early to go work out or hey, I'm getting up early, I got to finish some this or that. There's a totally different response between the women are just kind of like that's stupid stop working so much you don't need to do that you can skip your workout today versus other women that will look at me and they'll be like man i'm so proud of you for getting up this morning and going to work out it's like you know go go kick butt today stuff like that it's like if a woman can help motivate you rather than trying to take you away from your goals and just those little things um or you know if i have to work or like hey i gotta get ready for a seminar coming up some girls are like trying to pester me. It's like, no, you don't need to do that right now. Stop it. No, hang out with me instead. And other girls are like, oh, okay, I totally understand. Um, that's really cool that you're working. Like, good luck. Is there anything I can do to help you out? Totally different energies. I want the girls that are, she doesn't have to be motivated herself, but she's okay motivating me rather than trying to take me away and live in slob with her. I agree wholeheartedly, 100%. And there's a lot of other women we can tell you guys to avoid, but these are these are the, the top five or six we mentioned, maybe even seven. I think top five or six. Yeah, I think okay. it goes without saying an OnlyFans girl. I guess you kind of covered that with provocative photos. We don't even need to consider that. It's like every guy knows, like, if she's an OnlyFans model, no, you're not going to have some type of relationship. Yeah, so actually, but... let's touch up that. that. That should be my last one because there's a lot of influencers that are bragging about dating and OnlyFans girls or they're with an OnlyFans girls. And I don't understand the infatuation with famous people, even UFC fighters, WEC fighters that are dating OnlyFans girls, boxers that are dating porn stars. These people are very broken. There has to be something broken with you for you to even want to be with a woman like that because... If a woman has sold her body for money, whether a guy cash apped her, whether a guy paid her, whether she was working at a massage parlor doing happy endings, whether she has an OnlyFans, whether she was a stripper, any type of transaction that was done for her to sell her body, you guys don't think she's going to sell you right down the river? So if the cops come knocking on her door and they start asking for so-and-so, you know what she's going to say? Oh, he's right there in the closet. Go get him. That's what I mean, sell you right down the river. She's not going to break you out of prison. She's not going to remain loyal to you. She will throw you off of an apartment building for money. And she will have no remorse about it. If a girl is willing to sell her most sacred part about her, which is her body, for money, she will sell you right down the river you're not special guys and a lot of guys it's too late by the time they figure that out they get burned because that's the other thing is like i don't understand how guys like i get the bragging rights piece of it you're like oh look mia khalifa i got her and all these guys fantasize about her but like i would not have fun. i don't want all the guys to fantasize about my girl like if i'm at the beach 
the girl that wears those like kind of thongs, like Brazilian women look good in them too. They got like those, like they're wearing basically thongs at the beach. Those girls definitely turn my head in when I'm like drinking, I'm out at the beach wanting to flirt. Yeah, those are my target girls. They're looking good and all that. But if I'm ever thinking of like, what could I build something with? I would look I would look past those women to the women that have that body, but they wear an extra piece of shorts over their bikini or they wear, you know, a little bit of a shirt over there. It's, they're not sh exposing their entire body to the world. It's like, I don't know when that became a bragging right for guys to be like, yeah, look at my girl. You can see her online for nine ninety nine. To me, that's like cheap. I don't want my girl's boobs to be seen by, you know, hundreds or thousands of other men. I don't want her poonanny to be seen and, you know, uh, thirsted over by hundreds of thousands of men. No, I want a girl that is a freak in the sheets, but a lady in the streets, not a freak in the streets. Yeah, so they, you know how people like to judge a woman's past. And I understand certain things you can forgive and forget. Some women do grow, they change. But there's also certain things that you can't you can't erase from a woman's past. And that's one of them. So if she was a stripper in her late teens or she sold her body for money, even if she was a drug addict, whatever, I can never even sleep with a woman like that. Because you can't erase certain things that you've done in the past. So that's like a guy telling a girl. Oh, you know what? Back yeah, back in the day in my late teens, I, I did a gay porn scene and, you know, I needed the money. A woman's never going to forget that. She's never going to forgive you for that past. No matter what reasoning you have, you could be the straightest man in the world. You could be the most masculine. If she knows that you did that for money, that girl will never look at you the same way. You'll never see her again. Same thing when a girl has sold her body in the past. And I went out on a date. I mentioned this in the podcast I did last night with someone else that invited me. Last year, when I met this woman that had no red flags at PetSmart in the cat food aisle, we hung out that week. We go out on a date. Once again, she had no red flags, no tattoos, beautiful, feminine, nice body. I got her to open up at the bar. And she started revealing things to me. And one of the things she told me was she used to be a stripper back in her late teens. She was already in her early 30s when I was hanging out with her. I kept that in my back pocket because I can't forgive a girl for that. I can't erase that. And she used to do drugs as well. And she was intoxicated. She crashed her car into a tree, almost killed herself, almost flew through the windshield. There's certain things, guys, that you just cannot erase from your past. And I can never be with a girl like that. I never saw her again. No matter how big her ass was and how beautiful her and her body was a fucking 10 out of a 10. That ass, I still have nightmares about that ass because I never slept with her. But I did get to feel it <laughs> that night. And it was one of the nicest asses I've ever felt in my in my life. But there was just certain things I couldn't get over. And that was one of them. Yeah, but when that booty gets saggy, when she gets older, she's going to still have that mindset that you're going to have to deal with. And that's that's the problem. Of, but yeah, of, yeah, you know, all women age, they don't stay these beautiful models forever. So what are you left with personality wise? And I'll uh, I'll end with this piece, because um, a lot of times guys have a hard time, like having their own standards or boundaries. Like when we say, yeah, you can judge a woman for her past. And guys are like, well, it's not fair. People have changed all that. It's like, yeah, like you said, there's certain exceptions to the rule. But you guys got to understand that women, they will dig anything up from your past or anything you do, and they have no problem dropping you. So this is a meme from Reddit. The title, I distanced myself from my boyfriend because he cried in front of me. I've been dating my boyfriend for eight months now. I'm the type of woman who looks into dating a tall, muscular in white or tan guys who treats me nicely, gives me the attention I need, and makes me feel safe around him. My boyfriend fits all these traits, or at least I thought so. Almost a month ago, my boyfriend cried in front of me for the first time. The reason for this was because his mother had to go to the hospital urgently, and she was feeling really sick. She's fine now, don't worry. I'm not saying it's normal to cry when... I'm not saying it's not normal to cry when something bad happens to your loved ones, but seeing him break down and cry ruined the image I had of him. And I'll confess that this made me distance myself from him. My boyfriend realized 
that I am acting cold with him and has asked me numerous times if he did anything wrong. I still didn't confess to him and I really don't want this relationship to end. But if this feeling persists, I might have to open up to him and end things. I honestly don't know what to do. And that's an example where she found the guy she wanted, the tall guy. He treats her right, does everything. He cried one time in front of her. And this is why you guys listen to the vulnerability podcast because there's almost there's almost no right time to reveal vulnerability to women. It's like you got to be very careful with it because he did everything right. And he cried one time because his mom was er sick and going to the urgent room. And that was enough for her to potentially want to break up with him. So if you find out a girl has a, was a stripper in her past, she had an OnlyFans, you have more than enough reason to, to uh, worry about her past and hold that against her because women will hold anything against a man, even if they don't feel a spark, but the guy does everything else right. So you guys got to understand the game can be ruthless and uh, you got to look out for yourself. Yeah, or if she had a threesome and she randomly brings that up without you even asking her to. That's something I still can't forgive a woman that I'm with for doing. Okay, and it's okay. It's similar to that situation where he started crying in front of his girl when he should have remained stoic. He should have remained in his masculine frame. And if he really wanted to cry, he should have done that by himself where he was talking to God or his brother. Or his dog. Or someone else. Or his dog. Yep. Okay. So we don't tell you guys this because we hate you or because we're making fun of you. No, we just understand female nature and they reveal everything to you guys. And you still don't want to listen. All right, I think that gives them a... Did you have any uh, else you want to finish with or is that no. wrap it up? That's, that's I feel it. Like that's a, I feel like we gave them a good uh, amount to look out for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure they sign up for that seminar and join the Players University as well, okay? Once again, August 21st. It's going to come up very soon. So sign up because it's limited seating available. They better be hungry because if you guys really want to learn this, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I'm also not saying it's going to be hard. It all depends on how hungry you guys are. The hungrier you are, the easier it will be for you. When you so. know better, you do better. So if you guys want to learn, it's going to be, we're going to show you how to know better so that you can do better. But we cannot approach women for you. We can't text women for you. Although in the Players University, we can pretty much, you know, guys post screenshots and we can give them, hey, respond like this. But you're going to still have to do it on your own. But if you're willing and open to learning, Zar and I are going to make sure that you learn. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys, for the support as well. We love all of you. Yeah, we will be talking to you all soon, either in the seminar or in Players University. Take care.